Yo, hey guys, it's Bleaks. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video for a new profile series. I believe this is going to be episode 10. So, uh, last time we tried to play some of the priests, we got the first boss down, but uh, it looked like it wasn't really time efficient, so we'll revisit that a little bit later when we can uh, get some more stats for him, more stars, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I think actually we're going to play some more ranger. And there's two different things we can try. Uh, it's both going to be sh kind of showing off the power of the fountain. Don't really have a lot of uh, money to work with though. So uh, one thing you can do with the fountain is turn on a bunch of negatives to try to get a lot of extra XP. So there becomes a point where you have leech from the chapel. We currently don't have this, but as we unlock more of the town hall, guild hall upgrades, We'll be able to go down here and there is symbol of essence so we'd get 2.5 percent uh, lifesteal on primary attack and so once we have that we won't need to really sustain from our potions we can just continue attacking stuff so we'll be disabling that uh, more enemies is always more xp as you see like the xp is increased by 15 percent gold's increased by 15 percent um, i still usually don't activate potions because uh, sometimes you just need it if you're on like a, a trap that's like dangerous or you get chunked you need a potion i really don't want to add confusion on top of that but there will be a point where potions are kind of worthless for your character you'll have way too much health for what the potions will actually heal uh, so you can just kind of uh, enable that as well or disable it however you want to look at it um, i usually never increase the damage of traps unless you're just completely avoiding traps i actually want to go like general traps and safe corridors almost every run i I do. Um, you can do elite enemies, but these are going to be like red hat guys. These are going to be more mages and that kind of stuff. So you have to be really confident if you're going to do more elites. Uh, you can do runs where you're only looking for gold and disable the ores, but most people always leave ore on and they'll either take drinks to increase ore. You'll uh, up the energy level to get some more ore and maybe even take like the pickaxe to start. Uh, relentless threats if you're going fast enough you're not even going to notice this enemy overseers is kind of a positive because if you kill these mini bosses then you have a chance to get ace keys golden keys items uh, all that kind of stuff so as long as your character's like somewhat strong you're going to get like good benefit out of that um, you're never going to use the one-man guild agile adversaries um, this can be kind of tough like early on a character but later it's kind of a benefit it just makes you clear faster because all the enemies don't take forever to come to you. So if you're doing corner pulling or anything like that, uh, it's just kind of sped up because they move faster. It doesn't make them attack any faster, they just move faster. So it's pretty nice. Uh, minor Strike, if you're really confident that you can do a run without dying, um, if you beat the last boss, all your stuff goes to town anyway. So you can disable the elevators and see we're, we're like racking up uh, stuff here. So there could be... Well, we'll just actually run it. Um, dry springs, you don't need the well. Sealed cracks, no secrets. Empty pockets, bosses, enemies don't drop any loot. So we're up to 230 now. Instant death is a little brutal. Um, there are some ways around it. This just puts your base health at one. So if you get an item that increases your health, you can like get around it a little bit. But um, this is kind of like just for a meme or like your own challenge. And then public holiday, no shop keeps. So in this one, since we have... Um, Minor Strike activated, I'm actually going to turn off Ore, and I'm just not going to plan on sending anything back. We're just going to try to get some XP and kind of see how that goes. Um, my only way to sustain is going to be potions, so I'm not going to enable potions, and reducing the damage of traps and increasing them doesn't really do anything. Uh, I don't want to reduce my luck anymore. Uh, luck is your chance to like block, avoid, and trigger crits and everything else. So I don't really want to reduce it. All my percent chance stuff is already pretty low, so I don't want to go any lower. Um, more elite enemies. I could maybe get away with this because I'm probably only going to do Act 1, uh, maybe Act 2, and just see how much XP I get. But this would be an idea of just like how to mess around with the uh, the fountain and get some additional like bonuses out of it. So 320%. Uh, I think I'm just going to save my money to, for the next run. And we'll just kind of see what kind of XP we're looking at. So we're at uh, level 8. Our cap is 20 because we're still in NG uh <clears throat> ng0 but our xp rate is now 420 percent 
So, I mean, we're going to get less just in general because we're in Act 1 and, you know, our character is, whatever, kind of powerful for Act 1 at this point. But this is going to be mainly like a demonstration type of thing where you can change around the fountain to get some sweet benefits. And if you can handle it, then it's really good for uh, grinding some XP. Especially if we can get into like Act 2 or Act 3 without like taking too much damage to where we have to use all our potions or whatever. You can also do the same strategy and like skip Act 1, skip Act 2. Uh, which I might actually do. We'll get some items from doing that. So, I might just go ahead and skip here. There's not a shopkeep, so I don't really have to worry about picking up gold. I can't send anything back to town, so this is like purely for XP. So I'm just here to kill things. But I'm going to be more efficient time-wise if I uh, go through the portal. Uh, gold fever doesn't matter. The only one that would have really been good there is like any damage or sustain type monolith. Uh, I can always go through these traps. I did reduce the damage of the traps. I guess I could have just avoided them and had even more XP, but it really wouldn't be that much different at this point. All right, boots of speed, I'll take that. So yeah, you can kind of see my XP bar isn't really moving. These enemies are just like a little low for my character's level. They do give me XP, it's just not very much. So even times it by 400% or 300% additional, uh, doesn't really do a lot. We've gotten what, like 7% uh, or something? 7% of floor, I mean, that's not very good. It would take you kind of forever to get a level. So uh, with that in mind, we're going to skip this act and go to act two. And there's different ways you can do this. Uh, I didn't have to do the no stuff back to town. And I could have collected gold and maybe get and get to like the Act 2 boss or something. And then send my gold back just to get a little gold. Uh, that might have been a good idea. I just kind of wanted to show off like the whole idea of the fountain. Some of the extreme examples. You don't have to do it just for pushing the tower. Um, the other thing I would do would be to set it up to give you the easiest time possible instead of like trying to go for a lot of XP. Try to just go for, you know, traps don't do any damage. There's um, more enemies, but they're not elite enemies. There's the boss, the mini bosses, but uh, those are kind of a benefit. They give you items, so stuff like that, just to uh, make your run have more benefits. Their damage is kind of low. In Act 2, it seems. At least towards the cube. We knock out enemies pretty good. I mean, the more levels we get, the more ranks of bow shot we can pick up and some of the other skills will uh, definitely increase our damage just by doing this. If we can get some good levels. And it's one thing you just have to judge depending on like how far you are in the game. If it's good to do what I would call XP runs or if it's better to do what I would call progression runs. And you would set up your fountain differently for each. So this is more just, you know, XP run. Uh, when we go again, we would probably look to do a progression run and try to knock out uh, NG0, go to NG1. But we're going to need more money to do that because you need to roll the shop for like some items. Um, we may even buy some drinks, set up a fountain, might actually cost us some money. So yeah, our only sustain is still potions, but in the little bit of priest NG power we have now. But, um, yeah, I like, we can just hopefully not get hit very much. We have some evasion, so should be avoiding some amount of damage. And we can kill things relatively quickly, so as long as we continue to, like, try to dodge stuff. Uh, so I don't have any keys, so I don't really want to do really well on this. Uh, it's probably not even worth it. 
Not sure how many times I would have to make a mistake to get a uh, regular chest without any uh, like locks. I actually don't care about money. Gotta not get distracted by caring about money. We're just going for XP. Which we didn't spend anything on this run, so we're only gaining things. But in this case we're only gaining XP because we closed off the, uh, the elevators, which is fine. Yeah, the health is almost back up. I don't even think I've seen any food or anything. some natural region and avoiding attacks. Uh, the button would still be helpful because there's two chests, but I haven't seen it. Oh, there it is. Wasn't really paying attention. All right, let's just grab these two chests. We'll go to the next floor. Our XP is starting to go up. We're at 60%, so we gained a lot more from this level than the last level. Last level was like 7, brought us up to like 23. This gave us, you know, 30-something percent. So we should be able to get a level in Act 2. And then if we make it to Act 3, and we can actually like farm it efficiently, uh, we should be able to get maybe a couple more levels off of Act 3. That might bring us to like level 12-ish or something. And from there we might be looking to start actually pushing. Because for level 12 we have most of our skills that we can get from this class hall rank. Um, we'll have decent money to set up. We'll probably get like two or three levels just doing the run up through Act 4. So we'll be looking at being 15 or 16 by the end of the run. That'd be pretty nice. But you still get like uh, health, damage, resist each time you level. And you get different amounts depending on what character you are. I don't know them all offhand, but I know like the Paladin gets the best armor or scaling, and he has one of the best HP scalings. Sorcerer has the best mana scaling, stuff like that. It's all in the, the wiki, which can be helpful. Yeah, we don't have shopkeep at the shop. Which, in conjunction with uh, not being able to send your money back, basically means you don't even need to pick up any money. Unless you really feel like you're going to be able to push the whole the whole run, which I'm not going to be able to do. I would highly doubt I'd be able to do with this setup. Or lack of setup. Alright. Well, I guess I can pick up the key. It's possible we see a chest. But not super worried about it. So far there's been nothing, or it doesn't look like there's anything behind a button we care about. So we don't even really need to find the button this run. We're just solely here for XP. And I mean, different characters struggle in different ways. So this may be like a terrible strategy for some characters. Like if we were doing the priest and plus we got tons of levels and skills, I would like basically never do this because uh, the enemies and all of that might just be too much for the priest to handle at this point. But maybe when we get to NG2 or NG1 uh, or something, um, and the priest gets all his abilities, it'll be a little better. I have enough money in town to get him some good starting items or drinks. Uh, maybe I just want to farm some XP. But once you get through like the first part of the game, where you're just farming XP to get kind of close to 20 so you can beat NG0, you'll start uh, getting XP as you just go up in the ranks, and you'll only need five levels worth of XP every time you, uh, you do a new NG level, which is easier to keep up with than trying to get 20 levels in one NG level. It takes a little while. Which is, I mean, kind of how most games are. It's like slower at the start of the game, and the more you play, the faster it gets. 
It's definitely true in this game. At least with the starting part. Um, to get faster later, you kind of need the DLCs, but we'll talk about that later. Avoided that. Oh, we avoided everything. Nice. Okay, we got our first level as well. So we do have a chest that's uh we can unlock with our key and there's a key in there that's kind of kind of funny uh, so we have to find the button i guess we don't like technically have to but we're going to more items the easier it's going to be the further we can probably go I guess it's a little bit of a shame that uh, we turned off the elevators. Because we could have at least brought some of this gold home, or most of it home, since we wouldn't be spending it on shopkeeps um, or anything like that. And yeah, by doing that, we'd be able to uh, buy some more upgrades for our characters. So, small mistake, but really wanted to show off like the logic behind it and the flexibility of the fountain. You don't have to just use it for like copy everyone's suggested uh, setup. Because most people just kind of send what they would do for their uh, their progression runs, but not so much for like cheesy stuff like this. They're just like, I'm just going to get some XP real quick, or I'm going to try to increase the gold gain by 300% and pick up as much gold as I can and send it back. There's that kind of stuff. Because um, you could pair it with uh, the tax reduction. There's one on the, the positive favor side, the left hand side. That's tax reduction. You could pair it with a bunch of negatives. Oh, so I know the solution. I mean, you'd hit here and here, but I don't have a silver key. So I'm going like, to purposely just go back and forth with these. And then see if we can get a, a bronze key one. Nope, we still did it uh, too well. Alright, that's fine. Maybe another cycle or two would have done it. Usually that kind of never comes up. Alright, so another item. Um, yeah, what I was saying, like, you can increase your gold gain on one side of the fountain and reduce the tax rate on the other side of the fountain, so you'd be able to bring a lot of gold home. And if you start with some, you know, gold items or something, uh, you could probably farm a lot of gold really easily. Alternatively, later in the game, you'll have the ore trader kind of leveled up more, and your ore will turn into gold at the same rate that it uh, turns into ore. So for every thousand gold, you can make an ore, and for every ore, you can sell it for a thousand gold. But right now, my rates are really terrible. It's like 1,500 gold for an ore, or if I sell it, or it's like 200 gold or something like that. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> sniped. Okay. Um, so that's probably actually fine. So we can kind of show off the, the yeah, like idea of using the XP stuff. Uh, even though we only got one level, didn't really feel worth it in that case, but if we would have gotten to Act 3, it would have start, started picking up a lot more. So I'm actually going to go ahead and grab Grasping Roots just so we have a point in it. So we're going to mobilize enemies around the Ranger. Enemies caught have their armor reduced by 10%, and our stuff does physical damage. So reducing the armor will increase the bowshot damage. It just helps. If a lot of things get around me, I can, uh, I can snare them. Alright, so we didn't gain any gold. That's a little unfortunate. 
But I think we're just going to go straight into like an actual run. Um, the issue is the gold. Yeah, we can sell ore for 200 gold. Buy an ore cost 1500. Actually, let's see if there's anything we can upgrade in the town for 23 ore before we commit to that. So we really need some more money. Ore trader looks okay. Magic shop or the chapel is kind of soon. Or we can keep saving up for this. But we haven't even gotten this yet. So I think I'm just going to save up for the next rank of skills. That makes the most sense. So we'll just kind of hope that there's some decent items in the shop. There's like some tricky things you can do to get around having to like reroll. So if I go in here and I see, oh, I don't want these items. Uh, so it's Blackjack, by Stone, Ring of Rejuvenation. I can go in here. I can go ahead and kill my character, hit restart, and if I remember right, this shuffles the items. I might be wrong, but you could do that to avoid the cost. Yeah, so we shuffled the items. So we could, you know, theoretically not spend any money and just uh, find some items we actually like. <laughs> so that's like one like kind of a cheeky strategy you could use. Might be a waste of time in some aspects. But yeah, if you're really strapped for gold and you want some better items, you can do that. All right, broadsword, lucky charm, ring of mana. We'll buy what we can. Um, we can only buy two things, so ring of mana doesn't happen. So I'll show you kind of what I would set up for like a normal run. We really need ore and gold, so I'm gonna try to just go for like survival. Um, General traps, basically always. We don't have keys, so it's a little unfortunate, but hopefully we'll find some keys. All trapping corridors are disabled. Actually, uh, since we don't have keys, we're basically gonna be skipping probably the first two acts. That way uh, we don't see any more chests that we don't have keys for. We'll just do like the first floor, then we'll go to the cube and skip it, and then do the same thing. All right. Um, Towers can sometimes be an issue, but not so much on the Ranger, so I'm not really worried. Might go even for movement speed, just to go that much faster. Plentiful gifts from Imps is nice. You can get a chance of like a large amount of gold or ore. Uh, I'm gonna go with monoliths. Most of the monoliths are really good for primary characters, glass walks, treasure hunts. So more chances for treasure. Um, Glass walks let you get some treasure that you normally can't get. So, much positive favor we have. 27, so I'd go lousy consumables. We'll just assume that we're not gonna be sustaining enough pickups or we'll just do like a little bit will be enough. We'll go enemy reinforcements, get some more enemies, but it's more XP for us, that's so not bad. Relentless threats, we're not really worried about great threats. Enemy overseers give us keys and items. Agile enemies just move faster, it's not really a big deal. And then I think I'm going to go with Dry Springs, which is uh, wells are unusable. So these two potions will have to bring us to the end. But if I can get, I don't know, some XP or maybe through Act uh, Act 4, that'd be kind of nice. But since I don't have money, it's a little awkward. So I'm just going to try this. I feel pretty comfortable with this. We also could go Sealed Cracks since we're skipping some of the uh, some of the stuff, but not too worried. So we'll just do this and deposit the rest of my gold. And uh, let's make at least a little bit of money so we can set up for like a real run next time. Real run being like, we actually roll for items. We uh, um, have more money to spend in the fountain, some money to buy drinks, all that kind of stuff. Um, another thing we really need to look out for is every time we're in Act 3, we need to really be looking for the Anvil, because the Anvil can make a big difference. And I also want to look at upgrading the uh, the Guild Hall shop stuff soon. So we can actually try to get a green item every run, or maybe even a blue item, if we can upgrade it twice. <clears throat> Alright, so we found a silver key, so that's kind of nice. Uh, here's thanks to our glass walks, we get to skip the actual trap. Even though the trap does less damage, um, 
it's still worth like having the glass walks. And not all traps have glass walks, so it's still worth having the extra damage. Or the reduced damage. If you're gonna do traps. If you just plan on like skipping them completely, you can, I mean, adjust your fountain to how you like to play. But if you need like a baseline, you can kind of copy like what some other people are doing, but it's really to just make the game easier for you, whatever uh, works best with your playstyle. Some stuff just kind of makes sense, like the extra mini bosses, unless you're just, there's some mini boss that you really just can't handle and some character, um, maybe you don't want more of them, but usually you want the extra mini bosses for more XP, for more items, for more keys. Just kind of makes sense. Enemies moving faster usually doesn't matter for most characters. You can just keep moving. Kind of speeds up the gameplay. Right. So we're actually grabbing money. Even though we're going to be skipping the shops in the first two acts, uh, we're still grabbing money. Just so we have it for the act three one. So we skip two acts and then like act three we find it on floor two. Uh, we're probably not going to have near enough money to actually do anything. Right, I'm going to try to focus the cube more than I did last time. Basically just kill enemies when they get in between me and the cube. And maybe rangers if they're uh, getting too many of them. I'll use my mana when I have it. And just try not to get stuck on any enemies or anything. And so when I break the cube, all the enemies die. It's kind of like a, the idea behind it. If you could one-shot the cube, you wouldn't really see any enemies. Alright, so we skipped uh, Act 1. We're just going to Act 2. We haven't really racked up much gold yet, but I mean, it's only been Act 1, Floor 1. We also want XP. We want like too many things at the same time. So you could change the fountain to focus on any one thing, like experience, like gold, like... I um, can't really say or, but experience and gold, we're trying to progress through the game. Um, but since we kind of need everything at the same time, we're having to do it like this. And eventually we'll get enough money to work and buy a pet. That might be pretty helpful. We'll speed up our runs a little bit. But I think the one we'd want to buy is like 25k. And currently that would be better for chapel upgrades and whatnot. Oh, I got kind of stuck on enemies there. Surprised they weren't able to melee me. But hey, you just keep moving. You avoid a lot of stuff. Killed one. Killed two. And three. Alright, so I definitely need to find the button. Also, if you haven't found like the thief yet, uh, you can do runs like this and just look around Act 2 trying to, uh, to find the thief. Same goes with Act 3, really. The wizards in Act 3 and the anvil. Um, Act 4 has the bestiary, and am I missing anything else? I think that's everything. Oh, there's an imp. Uh, hopefully we get either ore or gold, that'd be the best, but even XP would be okay. I guess we actually don't want to see items in this case. And you only have a minute to get to him, so I need to kind of clear this out really quickly. Gave me an item. <laughs> the worst one, but I mean, it's a decent item. It's just I'd rather XP, because he'll sometimes give you like a level-ish worth of XP. Depends on what act you're in. And, uh, oh, we have a silver key. Alright, so I can do this one. Um, golden ore is pretty good. 
All right, so we got a blue item, Cape of the Flame Walker. This is a pretty interesting item. Does damage to things around you uh, and causes like burning. Oh, we haven't found the button. Oh, there it is. Um, so as things get close to me, they'll just kind of burn to death. We're not really scaling items right now. We scale items with uh, skill power. So we're still scaling like our primary with attack power. If we were adding skill power, it would increase the damage of this item. So, I mean, it burns enemies for 10 magic damage. I think it's every second. Doesn't really specify. And I haven't really checked it out in a while. Anyway, racking up some ore. Um, if I felt like I was going to die to this cube, I would go ahead and deposit. I don't feel that way, so I'm not going to, and we'll see if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> anyway, racking up some ore. I think we had, what, 23 in town? We need to get to, like, 60 for the next uh, ranks of skills. So since I have Cape of the Flame Walker, I'm going to try to stay even closer to the cube to get the extra 10 damage every second. Unless I'm, like, getting destroyed by these archers or something. Or mages when they start coming out. Alright, there's ghosts as well. I guess I should actually stop moving when there's no enemies because you shoot faster. But I'm just used to like continuously kiting all the time. And we have a little mini boss, so we can actually use our grasping roots that we picked up. Keep some kind of locked in place for a second. Ooh, that thing hurts. A little red stuff that comes out. I just try to finish off this soon. I would like to not have to use a potion. Alright, avoided the red one that time. And the arrows. <laughs> Alright, nice. We did it. We've got some pretty decent items. Sword of Kings plus 40 attack power, so it's gonna like double our attack power. Some extra gold gain, some health, uh, more gold gain, ore gain, construct damage is kinda eh. And then if enemies get close to us, it deals 50 damage. And it's combo sphere. Okay, not bad. Alright, traps do less damage. Uh, I should heal up slightly. I saw a piece of cheese over there. Let's do that. Oh, we don't even have a, a key. So another thing you gotta realize, you still have to have the keys. Try to get these rangers out of these turrets before I try to just focus down the statue. Easy, okay. So yeah, a lot of like the game is just trying to decide how strong your character is and what you feel like you can do on your character and prioritizing what you feel like you need for your uh, your class hall, your guild hall, all of that. Um, so I mean, I feel pretty strong now. I feel like I could probably push into some of the later acts. Um, so we'll definitely be setting that up soon. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I still need a lot of ore and gold and whatnot for upgrades. I think I still have some blacksmith upgrades on this character, plus all the other ones. I haven't gotten the chapel upgrade on this character, plus all my other characters. I've only gotten it on the paladin, I believe. Or was that the sorcerer? I got it on one. But I'd like to get it on the four starting characters. The other characters are important, but I'm really not going to focus on playing them until later. There's kind of a reason they didn't come out with the other ones. They're, they all have like some kind of gimmick that makes them a little harder to play. Uh, the priest has the lowest health. The thief is a very low health melee character. Um, what's the other one? The wizard's very low health caster with basically no defenses.
But it does do really good damage. So yeah, we're going to be looking for the anvil while we're here. Um, I'll definitely point it out when I see it, but... I don't know if we'll really find it before the uh, NG1 or NG2 or something. Alright, so we do have um, frequent threats on. So we're going to get ghosts a lot sooner than we normally did. They came from the left hand side of the screen, so we know to go over there to find the statues. It's always something you want to try to note so you can take down the statues more efficiently. And yeah, okay, so the statue is right over here. So we'll go ahead and take it out so we don't have to worry about great threats anymore. Some um, some great threats or some acts have great threats that only spawn, you know, with, well, these great threats only spawn if there are statues alive. Once the statues are dealt with, you, it's just like normal. You don't even have to worry. In Act 4, the great threats are a little different and they continuously spawn every so often. doesn't really matter. Um, same with Act 5 and Act 6. So this is the only act. This is kind of like the introductory period to Great Threats. Um, and a nice little thing to uh, tie into the statues. I'd be really happy when I finally get that leech from the chapel. That's going to be super nice for this character. So you can just kind of see, if I had like a lot of money, I could buy a lot of power for my character from the chapel and different ones. So a lot of the first part of the game is just farming, learning the game, and slowly leveling all your characters to level 20 at the same time. So you can get the bonus between all of them while you farm up for money. It's pretty cool. It's a neat system. I definitely like it. All right, so this is the last thing we have to do on this floor. We have a drink, another one. Immune to poison, reduce health gained. Interesting, probably won't ever use it, but it's cool to collect them. Um, I don't know if I've really talked about drinks before, but ever since you unlock the tavern, you can use drinks. You have to find them in the world before you can start using them. Um, if you run out of the number that you found, you can spend money to use them. Oh, wow, we actually found the anvil. So this is what the anvil looks like. Uh, you interact with it and it puts it in town. So when we go back to town, we'll show off the anvil. But um, I'm not going to lean too heavily on the anvil, or probably at all. Uh, just in case you guys are unlucky and don't find it early, I kind of want to show that like you don't have to be lucky to play this game, you know? <laughs> But yeah, it's, I mean, we're NG0, all of our characters are like level 10 and under, and we found the wizard, the thief, and uh, the anvil. So I mean, we found a lot of stuff. We haven't found a lot of the different drinks, but the only drinks we can find are the common level ones. As you go up in NG level, you'll find more patterns. Well, you'll find drinks and patterns. The patterns are going to be for the anvil, though. So what the anvil actually does is you can spend ore in town at the beginning of your first run. So you would go to the shop like we were looking, you would find the items you wanted to buy, you would buy all of those, and then you can craft one additional item at the anvil um, of any quality. So you can basically, once you have your town upgraded, you can start a run with two blue items, a green item, and uh, three common items. Which makes your pair makes your character super powerful, like right off the bat. Our right, bloodthirst ring. We actually have life steal now, so that's pretty nice. So this is what it would be like if we had the chapel upgrade. We have a way to sustain. And it kind of makes potions not as useful. I mean, it's nice in like a pinch. You don't have to have an enemy to heal off of, sometimes it's just not what's going on at that moment. Like sometimes uh, the issue you're having is you're taking too much damage for a trap and there's no enemies around for you to leech off of. Um, potions are still good in like those kind of regards. That's why I didn't take the confusion potion. 
enemy we didn't have leech. But I just kind of don't like the... Uh, not the confusion potion, but the thing in the fountain that makes your potions confuse you. Alright, so there's two statues up. So we really gotta start knocking these statues down. These great threats just come out faster and faster after this. Alright. Try to knock out this one as soon as possible. Aggro and all kinds of other enemies though. We took it out. We start clearing out the other enemies. One great threat's not a big deal. Two gets kind of old. You can deal with it, but the more and more stuff that you aggro, the harder it is to avoid everything. But as you can see, this ring is doing work for me with the leech. Um, it's not like I'm using a potion or anything, and my health is coming back. Also works well with the Sword of Kings that we found. They gave us the extra attack power, which converts into more leech. Just gotta watch out for these red hat guys. This guy should be good as long as I don't get bursted. And we should have a shop coming up either this floor or the next floor. I haven't seen it yet, so it's probably the next floor. And there's another great threat. We are constantly out of mana, so it's looking a little appealing to play our sorcerer a little more. But I mean, all the characters are good, at least the starting ones. I mean, they give you armor, resist, um, mana regen, and attack power. Got hit by that one. I don't know why I didn't move. As you can see, since we have wells turned off, that one's like completely drained, as if we just used it. Alright, let's see a secret up here. Let's go and grab this. We don't have a key, but we'll take the money. We don't have a key for that one. So we're losing out on some items just because we didn't have money to buy keys. So I kind of have to make a decision if I'm going to try to push for or just like get money. I think I'm just going to buy cheap items, try to push as far as I can, but kind of expect to just send most of this money back home and start a real run after this. I mean, if I can just get like a level two, it'd be pretty worth it. We also have like 20 ore, so that's been worth it. Got a couple more ore we can go pick up. Or one more ore at least. One to two ore depending on if our, our axe procs the extra ore. Unfortunately, no keys off of that guy, or we could have gone back and opened up one of those chests. So, rip two items. Oh, and we found the anvil, so it's definitely been like a successful run. We're getting things done. Even just the XP would be enough. But XP and bringing a little gold home so we can do like a, a more serious run after this one. too close to the wizard and he just popped me. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna use my grasping roots there. Try to avoid those guys. 
Uh, could use a potion here, but I'm feeling pretty confident I can just leech myself out of this. Definitely uh, got myself stuck in a bad spot. Oh, the blackjack doing work for me. Stunning the guy at a very good time. Yeah, you can uh, easily put yourself in a bad spot by kiting like mini bosses, or several mini bosses in that case, into like a small area. Yeah, blackjack for the win. Stunning that dude. I mean, we still had potions we could use, so. Alright, seen our first statue. Nice, more accomplishments. If we get enough of them, we should get more ore and stuff for town. So a lot of the early game is just playing the game more to get random accomplishments. They give you huge bonuses of uh, gold and ore. Alright, I gotta kill this statue soon, but I really want the room to be safe. I just keep pulling more and more enemies. Right, let's take out that guy. Let's get the mage, the bannerman. Get those guys. Now we're just pulling the other room. It's all right. Just trying to avoid having like a triple great threat. I'm sure we could handle it, or we're about to handle it. It's just not what I'm like trying to do. Yeah, triple great threat, not bad. So we know... Oh, we have a pattern over there. So that's... This is an item that's going to start showing up once you get the anvil. And there's basically a different pattern for every item in the game. Um, so it just lets you allow... It allows you to craft those items that you find. But eventually you'll get one for essentially every item in the game. There's a couple that aren't on there. Uh, we don't have a key for that, so I'm not going to worry. Incredible strength. Pick up my blueprint. I see a statue up here, so we're gonna go ahead and knock that down while we can. Character's feeling pretty strong. Secret. That's the bad eye one, just behind like a, a flag. You can, if you look closely, you can see the eyes pop up every like five seconds or something. Let's see. Do it. There we go. Alright, silver chest. Can't do that one. I don't remember if we passed up a bronze chest or not. I can look at the map in a second. I think the other one might have been bronze. Oh, our first necromancer. Well, we've kind of been lucky in that aspect. We haven't seen a bunch of necromancers. Got all the statues down. There is a bronze chest over there, so we'll be going back over there. All right, there's the tower. Here we got another bronze key, so that's nice. We'll have one for the future. And just pick up more gold. So I'm going to shift my goals to hopefully beat the Watcher this run. That's going to be the idea at least. Alright, so let's grab our chest. These guys can be kind of brutal, they're constructs, so you actually can't leech off the constructs. Because I guess they don't have like a life essence to steal, whatever kind of lore you want to give them. Um, but we're about to send this money back to town, so we'll send them to town and we'll do the boss fight. We have basically no money in town, so it should be pretty low tax rate. And now it's a good amount of ore. We still have our monolith buffs, so we're going to be doing really good damage here. If we can stay still, we can do more damage. Right, well, we avoided that, so that's nice. And this guy might put a green thing on us. He didn't. T 
Yeah, Rangers is kind of crazy. It's so nice being like a range character. Alright, so it's one down. Need the red one as always. Two down. And three down. Really easy. See, so yeah, that's why I've been pushing the Rangers so far so much and that's why I usually try to save monolith buffs until the end of a floor because uh, with plus 200 damage you see it makes the boss look super easy statues and all that weren't an issue but the bosses were the bosses can be not so much on this character because the ranger is just really good at that um, so, let me talk about this place. So since we're on floor one, I can grab this monolith now, it's not really going to be a big deal. There's no way I'm going to be able to hold it all the way till uh, floor three. Protective powers. So we get some increased, uh, reduced damage taken, rather. Increased defenses. Reduced damage taken by 50%. So. Pretty good stuff. Um, the way this act works is there are these books that you need to collect. You need to collect at least three of them. They go up here. And they show you what order you need to do the boss fight on. There's also tons of buttons in uh, in this act that unlock different things on the floor. So that one I pressed and it unlocked the exit. So the exit is uh, there now. It's shown up on the map. It, that's the icon that it always looks like. This is the book icon. It's red whenever you haven't gotten it. And these are like warp holes. So if we go in the warp hole, we're going to be teleported to like another area of the map. It's usually a trap. Sometimes it's just a loot room. So we'll jump through this one. We'll see. So yeah, it's a trap. And every trap is just a little different. But they get reused. So once you start learning them, I don't have a silver, ch silver key. Kind of should have looked at that. And I failed the trap a little bit. Anyway, um, yeah, so right now I need to be looking out for what things I actually have keys for and just looking for buttons in general. I see another button, I'll show it, but it looks similar to the button in Act 2, but more of like the Act 3 style. There's gonna be a lot more money in this act. We've already gotten, you know, like 2,000 gold. Should be a lot more XP as well. The only thing is the you start getting a lot of magic damage, like these projectiles are magic, those mages are magic. You usually don't have as much magic resist as armor. So I have 13 magic resist, 23 armor, so I really don't have a lot of either. But um, I'll definitely feel the magic damage a bit more. And there's just so much of it. So I'm trying to avoid all these projectiles. If I can. Just, that's a lot of them. Oh, and there's Ghost. And Great Threats. We'll be able to show off the Great Threat. I want to get away from that tower, though. He shoots like a line attack that confuses you. Same with this guy. He will also try to confuse you. He's the Great Threat. Summons little adds, and he does a little laser shot. That confuses you if you get hit. So I haven't seen any secrets, haven't seen any cracked walls that I've noticed. I haven't seen any more buttons, so we might be done here. And there's no more warp holes. So yeah, I think we're actually done. I guess I can kill that stuff for XP. Alright, that's enough. <laughs> I don't want to go too far in there and get Surrounded by projectiles, something bad happened. Because I want to at least try to get done with this boss. I don't have enough money in town to do like a serious run. Alright, so there's another book. Usually the exit button is attached to where the book is. You can see there's a button here, and that's for the exit. There's our second book. It goes up here with the number, so that's the first one we need to do in the sequence on the boss fight. And that's the fourth one. So we need to find one more and then by process of elimination we know what order we need to do everything. Alright, so there's our shop, so we need to pick up some more money. Also another monolith. This one I might be able to keep until the boss fight. 
I'm gonna wait. Alright, let's see how much money we need. We might be good. Fancy Plume, Duelist Edge is 5k. Markham's already have one piece. Steady Greaves. I think I definitely want Steady Greaves and Markham's. And we'll see if I get 5k or not. If I even want to spend 5k on that. It's a super good item, so I kind of do. But I don't know if I can collect 5k in this, uh, this one floor. Uh, there's the Red Wisp. Uh, maybe it doesn't do it this NG. But anyway, Wisp eventually start uh, having this ability where when they die, they shoot out projectiles, and then they also downgrade from like the Red Wisp to the Blue Wisp. So they get kind of crazy. Right, there's another button. You can use the Tab key to look at the map while you press the button. You can kind of see you can see where secret spawns. So it was this room right here just popped up. It's like a little little trick you can do. I got some gold coins. So that's some good money. 2.3k out of the five we need. Might be playing a little crazy, a little too crazy. Things get too bad. I'm gonna jump through one of these portals. But I mean, I've done this act before, I feel a little more confident, I guess. Alright, half health, but we're jumping through the portal. So we don't have a silver key, so we don't really have to worry about going over there, but this little thing confuses you, and you can kind of creep up on the other platforms to see which ones are lit and not lit, to try to find your way to the chest or try to find your way to the exit. Alright, now I'm going to jump through the other one. Still don't have a silver key. And there's our great threat. So it's just kind of unfortunate we haven't been able to find any silver keys. I think we've given up like five or six items now by not having it. I'm just constantly trying to move to avoid projectiles and avoid his little line attack that confuses me. Ooh. Alright, we almost died there. Um, wow. Alright, so we're playing a little crazy. That was uh, the power of the Red Wisp. It'll do a lot of damage to you. So, let's see what else we need to do on this floor and let's get out of here. So we're at 3.5. We could maybe scrounge up enough gold by busting every pot. But I'm just gonna, like, ignore it, essentially. It's a little too much effort for what I'm trying to do. Jeez. Those wisp projectiles, they do a lot of damage. If you're taking too much damage, you can always play the Warlock some more, but we've gotten the Warlock through the third floor. So really, the only thing we can do is try to get the Warlock in here, and he has no evasion. Doesn't really have a, a lot of mana regen right now, so he doesn't have a real good way to sustain through all this damage. Alright, we found a book, so we can kind of get out of here at any moment. And we found the exit. So I'm going to just look for ore and other stuff. We have a forge. Uh, we can't really craft anything. So the forge, or magic furnace, lets you see the items. Uh, I guess they're all items I've unlocked with the anvil and you can craft them during a run for their ore cost. But for some reason I can't craft that. I already have Vendor's Coin, so I can't craft that. And these two I don't have enough. Can't craft an item you already have. You can find a duplicate item, but only if you've uh, found all the items of that rarity. So if I found every common item in the game, there would be a chance that when a common item dropped, it would be a duplicate item. But it's very uncommon, especially since I've been adding more and more items to the game. Alright, oh, there's a red wisp down there. So many projectiles that it sends out. And watch out for this turret. So 
It's gonna try to confuse me. Don't have a gold key either, so this is like kind of the same strategy as the other one. This is why we do like uh, general traps, because you may get traps like this to where, yeah, there's no enemies, so you're normally able to like leech, but. Alright, and I kind of saw that it's this way, so the only like combination can really be down. So I know I can just kind of run through the rest. Yeah, if I were to have to run through the lava, or I got hit by the the lava squares, or I got hit by the uh, the fireballs, I wouldn't take as much damage. So. Jump traps is really useful if you're gonna try to get any of the items. Even if you're not trying to get the items, if you're going through the portals, you're most likely going to uh, have the opportunity to take some damage from some traps. All the traps are technically 100% avoidable, but it's pretty difficult sometimes. I don't see any buttons over there, but my defense monolith is about to wear off, and I currently have the XP monolith, so I'm just going to try to kill stuff to get more XP. So we have more money at the same time. Oh, some more money over there. These little trees are uh, the spawners for these orbs. You really want to take them down as soon as you can. The big red eyes are the spawners for the eyeballs. They're not as big of a deal. Magic damage is much scarier. Cool. Alright, let me eat these oranges. Yeah, and they're 50% less effective because of the fountain, but that's alright. Basically, I just want to take that out so I can go down here without getting confused. Or if I was going the other way. But it's dead end. So we have the great threats coming. You can see them on the map. All right, and that needs an ace key. Don't have one of those, so we're good to go. Let me just go to the next floor. Don't get confused by that guy. Alright, there should be a deposit. The deposit's just over here. So we go deposit, and then we're ready to try the boss. So whatever happens, happens. 50% um, uh, tax rate. And avoid some of that. So, what character needs some upgrades? I think maybe the sorcerer will be kind of one of the next ones. Really, we can always spend like 10k on the chapel. We have seven here. All right, let's get him some armor and movement speed. He doesn't really need attack power, but it's only a thousand. We'll just buy that. And then we should have enough gold in town from this deposit to uh, really set up the next run. If all things go bad. Alright, so this deposit, 29 tax instead of 50. Pretty decent. So yeah, this boss you have to do the sequence. 
So the first one is the blue one. Uh, the blue one corresponds to the moon. Well, you first start by the book in the center, but then you go around here. You just have to kind of learn which one means what. Anyway, every phase, he's going to summon more orbs. Uh, the orbs ignite you if you get hit, and they confuse you on higher NG levels. So we got ignited, so that's not good. I have to use a potion already. Alright, orbs slow down. I'm gonna run out. I got hit again. Alright, uh, that's a little unfortunate. Got hit by the ignites twice. Don't have any potions left. So, we'll see how this goes. Um, we'll do the dark one. I can't just wait on my health to regen, but not too worried. Try to get a lot of my health back here. I just look to play a little better. But I worst got some levels. I'll be ready to do this on the next run. As you see, there's a third orb now. Oh, they get hit again. Great, I'm gonna try to leech. Oof. Oh, what did I get hit by? Oh, oh well. Alright, so, the watch is kinda hard, but... I think with uh, the proper start, we'll uh, be able to get him down pretty easily. Anyway, so back to town. We have 64 ore, so we can upgrade to the next set of skills. If we can get enough damage where we can just uh, kind of burst them down, that's going to be the best case scenario. So I'm upgrading my skills. It's going to upgrade the town. We have 11 stars to spend, so we're getting close to uh, <clears throat> max bow shot damage. I think we're going to be one off. So we'll get the next thing of bow shot, and also looking at getting twin arrows soon, because that'll give us some more uh, more clear potential. Anyway, that's going to be the episode for today. We'll figure out what we're doing next time, and I'll see you then.